we're back to discuss Inferno, and if you saw our review, um, we're mixed on it. It's it's fine for what it is. Um, the way that it starts off, um, where it's all, he has like the amnesia and he's not really remembering what's going on. Not a particularly big fan of that as a plot device or as a way of keeping information from the audience. Um, they kind of let that go and go and go for too long. Um, I also realized that because the first half, two thirds of the movie, he's being double crossed by the Sienna character, they suddenly need him to establish that he's friends with all these other characters, or at least with the Elizabeth character. And so suddenly they bring her in and give her a bunch of exposition. They give the Indian guy some exposition. They give the, like, African guy a bunch of exposition. And it really only matters that we hear about Elizabeth because she's the only one that really matters to the end of the story and really the only one that has any sort of, you know, any sort of uh, stuff put in, into it. So to me, it feels like a two-part movie that is hard to sit through in one sitting. Um, I, I think, you know, not that I'm a big fan of people breaking movies in two parts. Like, I'm glad they didn't do in Inferno Part 1 and Inferno Part 2. <laughs> but, you know, it's a movie that I could say, like, the first... 80 minutes or so could be one sitting and the other 40 minutes could be the other sitting. Well, uh, the and it's not that I get impatient with longer movies. It's just that the way that this movie is plotted out, like it's Robert and Sienna for the majority of the movie. And then suddenly she turns on him and he needs other allies and they have to introduce his other allies and they haven't done a good job of doing that before that point. So they, there's a bunch of scenes that he's not even there for that introduce those characters a little bit more. The big deficit that this movie had was like in Vinci Code, there were 15, 20 puzzles. Right. In this one, there were three. Right. And because there were only three, there was no meat to this movie. So what they had to do was they took a scene that should have been done in three to five minutes and turned it into a 20, 25 minute scene. It it shouldn't have been as long as it was. Yeah. You cut 40, 45 minutes off of that movie, you've got a pretty good action film. I think you, have, you get the impression that they were so excited and I've like I've seen interviews with Tom Hanks where he's talking about this where they were so excited that they actually got to film in a bunch of these museums and like in Florence and stuff like that mm -hmm. it feels like they tried to justify it by you know let's make a set piece you know let's make a 12 minute action sequence that happens after the museum scene here yeah the scene where they're trying to escape that museum through the ceiling yeah. Every single time a different character enters the museum, they do this wide shot of the ceiling. So you mm -hmm. know that they're in that museum. Right. Every single time. Do we need to see that shot ten times? They even showed it when some bit character came in and whispered something in Elizabeth's ear. Why? Like, I, I get it, they're excited, but it, it it's seemed pointless and just a way to extend the scene longer. Right. Yeah, and all of the puzzles that they do have, like, they don't solve it in a way that the viewer is along for the ride. They solve it in a way that's, you know... They, they do it all in their head. It's, it's like the 1960s Batman solving Riddler riddles. Like, <laughs> they don't make any sense. It's like, what's yellow and rings? A, a banana phone. Exactly right, Robin. Okay. How do we get there? Well, it's a logic train. There's just not enough to this movie to have made it as, as long as it was. And there were way too many characters. Like, the... the there were way too many characters to support 
a first act that's all amnesia. Ugh. That they don't explain who all the other characters are. If they had... If, if they had introduced those other characters and then you slowly figure out that they're not... They're not all against him. Like... The Indian guy, which I keep calling him the Indian guy because I don't remember what his name is because he's not in enough of the movie. I was just about to say the black agent. But he he switches from... He's on the bad side to he figures out what the motive of his boss is and he switches sides. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why we couldn't have known that that guy's motivations were something at the beginning of the movie and then have him switch sides. Like, that could have... That could have worked. But I get what they were doing. They were keeping it simple to start things off. And it's also... The movie's so confusing as it is at the beginning because it is an amnesia fever dream. The first 20 minutes were hard for me to watch. Yeah, like, I agree. They made me sick to my stomach. I agree. Because there were quick cuts. I get that Dr. Langdon's character, uh, Tom Hanks' character, is supposed to be... Uh, disoriented right. and confused. Well, and it makes the movie... It gives the movie a more exciting start than, you know, hey, Dr. Langdon, we got a job for you. You know, it doesn't have like an... It doesn't have the... the traditional start where he's just kind of sitting in his office and someone comes in and needs his help. Yeah. I almost got up and left because it was so... It was so hard to watch those opening minutes with the quick cuts and the shaky camera. Yeah. It, it, it was bad. Like, I've watched found footage films that were easier to watch. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not not a fan, but, yeah, I mean, again, if, if this is your type of movie, more power to you. Um, I'd rather watch National Treasure personally, but that's just me. You know. Mm. Stupid action adventure puzzle movie. Oh, I, I've seen it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll just stick with the original Indiana Jones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, if you like the way we do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com. Thanks for watching.